And so then next up, we have uh, Marnie. And Marnie is going to provide an update on the Healthy Work Survey uh, for organizations. Valerie, that was a fantastic uh, sneak peek at what looks to be um, an extremely valuable website, I have to say, having been in the world of websites for the last two or three years. <laughs> It is a it is a big job and it's uh, it's it's uh, a lot of work and uh, uh, you know a lot of different uh, folks that get to put input into it which um, you know I think is really valuable and it's really about translating you know the research and the the work that we know into you know more and more accessible uh, ways for the for organizations and for the general public. So um, we are not anywhere near as um, far along as uh, OCAL is with this wonderful uh, workplace mental health uh, website and of course the stress assess which really did inspire us to um, develop the kinds of tools we're trying to develop through the healthy work campaign um, uh, at, in the United States and specifically target it to the United States which obviously there's a lot of work to do there in terms of acknowledgement of psychosocial uh, work stress hazards and uh, mental health issues in the workplace. So um, today we we're um, I'm going to give a, a brief update on where we are with um, our healthy work survey, which is um, something we've been developing, you know, now for a couple of years. Um, we have on our actual website, which I'll show you in a moment. We've been um, relying on stress assess. It's such a great model um, to direct people to uh, use that uh, survey to uh, assess their workplaces. Uh, why we've been developing the Healthy Work Survey. So I will uh, give an update on what that is for those of you who may not know about it um, uh, and, uh, you know, sort of show kind of where we are in terms of the, um, the Healthy Work Survey for organizations. So in general, for those of you who may not know, the Healthy Work Campaign um, is a project of the Center for Social Epidemiology, which is a nonprofit um, a center um, run by Dr. Peter Schnall, myself, and a number of colleagues from different universities and different locations. Um, and really, we've been focusing on trying to translate the information in uh, sort of the work stress and health literature that's been developing for, you know, 30 or 40 years now into more ac accessible information for, uh, you know, our community, our academic community to occupational safety and health um, professionals. And also now with the Healthy Work Campaign to the general public, to media and so forth. So this is our website. We launched it um, in 2018. Um, it's healthywork.org. I'm not gonna go give a sneak peek live because uh, I was concerned about <laughs> uh, live, you know, live streaming issues with the website, but you can go to healthywork.org and, uh, and flip through it. On the front page here, um, you can see there's a little um, play tab. Um, a video, um, it will pop up. So one of the first projects that we did was um, we were really interested in creating a, um, a film um, on the issues around healthy work and work stressors. So we did produce an 11 minute uh, documentary called Working on Empty, which really tried to lay out the major issues around um, work stress in the workplace and um, how the organization of work impacts um, cardiovascular health as well as mental health. Um, and other issues. Um, and so you can look at that um, on the first page of our website. So we have a big team um, of folks that uh, we're working with, um, and I'd like to acknowledge all of them um, in terms of the work we've been able to accomplish. Um, myself and Peter uh, co-directing the um, Healthy Work Campaign. And we have uh, Dr. Paul Landsbergis um, in SUNY uh, Downstate. Um, and more recently, Peran Fagri, who um, is a colleague that was at uh, uh, University of Connecticut and part of the Center for the Promotion of Health, which is one of the NIOSH Centers of Excellence. So she's come in to work with us um, and is an adjunct uh, faculty at UCLA. And then even more recently, um, David Legrand, who was the CWA National Safety and Health Director, who has uh, since retired, but is uh, coming on board with us to work on outreach to labor unions and uh, worker advocate organizations uh, in the hope of, uh, you know, them using the tools and resources that we have on the on the website. 
Um, we have a list of partners as well, and we're happy to have um, OCAL among them, and uh, we look forward to more collaborations. I um, absolutely look forward to providing a link on our website to this new mental health uh, uh, in the workplace website um, and stress assess and so on. Uh, I think there's such valuable information and, and honestly, you know, a model for what we would like to eventually um, be able to produce on our end. So the Healthy Work Campaign goals, um, for those of you who may not have uh, heard of this um, before, the goals uh, are on our website as well. Um, but we have four main goals. Um, one is to obviously educate um, working people and others, um, uh, including organizations, including labor unions, occupational safety and health folks, um, about how work impacts uh, our health. and. Um, the costs uh, of that, as well as the many solutions that are available to promote healthy work. And I like that uh, Valerie had so much great information on the website about, um, uh, you know, tracking once the survey is complete, you know, giving people uh, formats uh, to follow uh, in order to, you know, turn those results into actionable steps. And I think that's a very primary focus for the Healthy Work campaign as well. Um, our second goal is to assess the workplace for unhealthy work stresses, um, and that's where the Healthy Work Survey comes in. And we obviously have um, relied on stress assess, and will continue to promote stress assess as a tool as well, um, uh, so that individuals and organisations can um, begin to assess and identify those workplace uh, psychosocial hazards that are impacting on mental health and and well-being of um, workers. The third goal is to equip workers and organizations. Um, we call them healthy work tools, basically with resources um, and steps to follow to uh, try to implement interventions that can be used in the workplace to promote healthy work, healthy organizations to impact on mental health, especially as we know it's such a crisis um, all around the world. And then lastly, we're sort of an action campaign. So we're really interested in trying to inspire action. So, Part of that is about getting other people to think about and share the message about healthy work, about uh, dealing with workplace mental health, about implementing organizational change, kind of taking it um, beyond focusing on the individual as the only site of change to thinking about how we can change and improve organizations, how we can uh, promote and work around uh, getting better regulations and um, laws uh, and so on. Um, and so we really want to create a movement really in this in this case uh, as a campaign. So just briefly, I'm going to show you what we've been doing um, over the last year or two. Um, obviously, with COVID, uh, this last year has been a really, uh, you know, it's, what can we say? <laughs> it's been a year. It's been a tough year. Um, but, you know, it has been a year for health and safety and um, really thinking about the workplace as a site for um, exposure to illness, in this case, obviously, the, um, the virus. Um, but, you know, we also want to um, focus on the various other hazards in the workplace that impact people's health and, and wellness. Um, so we have a blog post where we um, post on um, current events, on news stories that have come up just um, recently, actually, which is not on the screenshot, unfortunately. Um, we posted about a, um, the WHO and ILO report that showed um, a connection between long work hours and stroke incidents and heart, heart disease. Um, long time coming, but um, it did receive a lot of media attention. So we wanted to make sure that that information um, gets out there as well. We published a quarterly newsletter. Um, we'd love you guys to uh, join up on the front page of the website. A little box will pop up and ask you to join the movement, which means join our newsletter. We only send it out once every three months. So we promise not to inundate anyone. <laughs> We've also been publishing on Medium, which if, for those of you who don't know, is an independent publishing site. Um, they do curate some of the articles and it, um, our articles have been picked up and used in various um, sections of the website and promoted. Um, but we've written a number of articles in the last year about uh, COVID-19 and its impact on work. So uh, looking at school reopenings and the debate around uh, health and safety for teachers. Um, also, um, we looked at the work-life uh, boundaries of the changes that occurred as a result of, um, of COVID and uh, a lot of workers uh, 
uh, working from home um, and also uh, looking at essential workers and obviously the impact of COVID on the workplace for essential workers has been, uh, you know, massive. Um, essential workers aren't able to stay at home. So the, their exposure was much higher than other occupational groups. We wrote an editorial um, in the Journal of Occupational Environmental Medicine just about the subject to really think about um, essential work in terms of the exposure, the increased exposure to COVID-19 as a result of um, being in close proximity to other co-workers, being in close proximity to the public, um, and also the way in which workers organized that um, made those exposures more difficult. We've seen the outbreaks in meatpacking industries, for example, where they, um, they didn't choose to slow down the process. Um, so people were still jammed in there together. There was, there was a lot of work organization issues around um, increased exposure. But also we wanted to point out that work stress played a role um, in uh, essential workers vulnerabilities. And we know that many essential work jobs are, are highly um, stressful um, and they uh, have uh, some of the components of the work stresses we look at, job, high job demands, low job control, especially for low wage essential workers. Um, and in those jobs, uh, the stress takes a toll on health and there's a higher level of comorbidities in many of these populations, um, which puts them at risk for, for more severe outcomes from COVID-19 as we've seen. So we think that work stress also plays a role in the kind of uh, outcomes that we're seeing um, uh, in essential workers in terms of um, more hospitalizations and more deaths. Uh, and the Healthy Work Survey, um, this is our goal about assessing. Um, it was a project um, in collaboration with university researchers, our um, principal investigator, investigator Dr. Bonky Choi at UC Irvine um, was the main uh, uh, researcher that headed this project. Um, he did an extensive um, search uh, in the literature um, to look at what work stress surveys were out there. Um, we looked at the COPSOC. We looked at the NIOSH quality of work life survey. We realized one of the key uh, components that we liked about the stress assess was the ability to compare to national averages. So um, the NIOSH quality of work life survey, while it hasn't been operationalized um, in terms of these key stressor components, um, it does have a national, it's part of a national um, population survey that's um, through the general social survey in the US that's um, administered every four years. So we were able to gather data from 2002 to 2018 in order to uh, do some psychometric analysis and validation of the components that we wanted to include in a healthy work survey. Um, we're working on a manuscript um, and a report that will validate the different components of the healthy work survey. Um, we've been collaborating with uh, John on uh, stress assess since 2018. He's uh, helped us uh, look at the Healthy Work Survey content, um, as well as the online report system that we've uh, set up, um, as well as other um, experts. Uh, on, in January this year, we were able to um, publish the Healthy Work Survey for Individuals online. Um, so any individual can, can click on uh, Healthy Work Survey, um, uh, healthywork.org and go to the uh, individuals tab, uh, individual survey and uh, click on the take the survey link and it will uh, take you instantly to this uh, nice survey uh, here um, and it takes about 20 minutes to complete and at the end you have the ability to choose to receive a free email report which um, I will show you next which will show individuals how their um, work stressor levels um, relate to uh, national survey um, levels. So it will tell you with your high risk in certain areas compared to the national survey data from the NIOSH quality of work life survey. As uh, uh, the next step was also to create um, a healthy work survey for organizations, which is the same survey as individuals, but obviously with the report, we wanted to create an automated aggregated report. Um, we've created two um, uh, survey web pages, one that's um, tailored specifically for labor uh, and worker advocacy groups, and one that's tailored specifically to employers. So we have content about why use the survey uh, and how to use it, and, um, and then how to go about implementing changes depending on whether uh, you're a labor organization or uh, uh, any other kind of organization, nonprofit or in the private sector. 
So the main features of the Healthy Work Survey was we wanted it, obviously it's freely available. Um, it's online, uh, it's anonymous, secure, confidential. Um, it measures the uh, work stressors, sources of stress at work that harm mental and physical health. Um, we also included some um, self-reported health outcomes. Uh, it provide, we provide an automated individual personal report via email at this point. Um, and an aggregate group level organization report, which we're still tweaking. It's not quite ready to, to go out, but um, uh, it's getting close. So basically we compare the commonly validated work stressor scores, job demands um, and others to the NIOSH quality of work life questionnaire, as I mentioned. It's really intended as an educational tool um, to help facilitate workplace improvements, but it can be used for research also. So these are the uh, components um, of the uh, survey, the major areas and the items uh, that are included. So you can see we measure many of the same um, uh, domains as um, the uh, stress assess survey. Uh, this is the website for the Healthy Work Survey for Individuals. Um, it's a new website, web page, as I mentioned, launched in January. Um, on the report, which I'll show in a moment, we are able to uh, include links, which um, take people back to the web page to uh, read information. <coughs> and hopefully, eventually, we'll have short video information about the different components um, that they may uh, find on their report. For example, if they find a high risk um, for job demands, they can click on the link and go back and, and it'll tell them what it means that they have a highly demanding job and how that might impact their health. So this is an example of the emailed report they would receive. So you can see in the boxes below um, for job demands, it shows what their score is and it tells what the level of risk is. Um, so you might have intermediate risk in this one um, for job demands, for workload, um, resource adequacy, um, long work hours, for example, um, and so on. So the blue uh, links there um, in the email that people receive um, can be clicked on and it will take them back to the Healthy Work Survey um, for individuals with information about, um, you know, what, this, what these risks mean. And uh, we do now have our Healthy Work Survey for Organizations web pages up. There are two separate web pages, as I mentioned, because we wanted to tailor information for labor unions um, and, uh, and also for employers. They're very similar. Um, and the request access button takes, um, takes you to a Google form, which uh, organizations can fill out to request access to the survey. And once that's sent uh, to us, um, we can contact them with uh, more information as well as um, a unique link uh, for that organization uh, to use. Um, and I'll show you how that will, how that works. So along with the link um, that we would send or email back to a representative of the organization, uh, we, we would, we've got this um, guidance for administering the survey. So not as wonderfully sophisticated as a stress assess guidance, but um, we wanted to have some information out there about um, how organizations can go about actually, you know, doing a survey. Um, obviously, we need, you know, to encourage recruitment and um, at least 60 to 80 percent participation. We know with web surveys, it's not always nearly that high, um, but, you know, to really promote, uh, to get good data, we need um, and, uh, organizations to realize they do need to get uh, good uh, participation. We we re-emphasize the importance of informed consent, of voluntary participation, and we also have an email template that we send out to organizations um, along with the link so that they can send it to participants or employees um, and uh, help to promote uh, participation. So this is available as a PDF on the web pages. Um, right now, um, we would like to, you know, work on improving that, um, but it would also be sent along with the email that we communicate directly with the organizations. So the organizational report, <clears throat> it's a fully automated system. So when a company uh, gets enough participants to fill it out, um, then they will uh, email us and we will um, generate the report. Um, it's all um, will be eventually uh, emailed as a PDF to uh, a designated representative. Um, it's similar in terms of the content to the individual report. Obviously, we would show the risk levels for the organization, 
based on the NIOSH quality of work life score ranges again in those um, areas that we're promoting. We also have some national data on health, uh, self reported health uh, questions. So we can actually um, tag or um, look at the risk level for the organization in those health related areas as well. One other component that we've worked on is creating an expert assessment algorithm, um, which basically takes the national averages and the percentage of risk exposure from the national population data and um, allows us to use that as kind of a, um, uh, a criteria for determining um, uh, if the organization has an average above that national average or their um, percentage at risk is higher then they'll get a red dot. And the red dot next to these work stresses means is this is something to pay attention to. So um, this will help to uh, condense the amount of data and really have organizations focus in on what are the uh, what might be the important priorities um, uh, and hazards in the workplace. So the next steps, we're finalizing the report, um, but the, the web pages are up and running. We're in discussions um, through David Legrand with UPTI CWA, which is a professional and technical union that represents nurses and other university uh, technical uh, employees to pilot test the system. Um, and we'll probably push this out and officially launch it um, within the next month or so. So as well, um, if I've got time, um, I wanted to show you a little bit about the kinds of um, resources that we have um, developed um, primarily, this is about what you do with the survey once you have the results and um, we wanted to equip workers and organizations with healthy work tools, um, including interventions that can be used to promote healthy work. So we have healthy work tools pages for unions and for employers. We actually have one for individuals as well um, that includes not just behavior um, steps that individuals can take to help cope with stress, but also collective actions that they can get involved with to try to um, promote workplace change more broadly. Um, but these tools are a step by step guidance um, for carrying out workplace change um, and we're working on improving these um, and uh, making them more accessible. Just as Valerie was talking about, um, there's a constant improvement um, model going on in terms of making this as accessible as possible. One of the innovations that we have um, provided is um, a page that we call healthy work strategies. And these are case studies or short reports that Paul and graduate students at SUNY Downstate have produced for the healthy work campaign um, that summarize um, successful workplace research studies, um, workplace policies or programs, uh, union contract language, as well as regulations and laws that were designed or were um, intended to uh, improve working conditions and so reduce sources of stress at work. And these are available um, on our website. They're um, supposed to be accessible, written in language that most people can understand. They're short, usually two to, one to two or two to three pages long, and they can be um, downloaded as PDFs. Um, and they're great examples that organizations can use to see what other organizations have done uh, successfully. Um, we also produced a range of case studies on diff what different groups and organizations have done to reduce COVID-19 related work stressors. Um, and uh, you can click on this link and uh, be taken to that page. So this is the page here. You can see we have sections here that um, uh, will take you to a list of uh, different case studies um, that can be downloaded and read. So we also wanted to um, make this make these healthy work strategies and tools pages more accessible to organizations that do the healthy work survey. So we wanted to, we created a uh, at this point a PDF what to do with the results. Um, we developed two PDF guides uh, to interventions, um, and we uh, have them available on the new healthy work survey web pages. Um, people can download. We tailored um, them for unions. Um, once they have, uh, you know, healthy work survey results, what do you do with them? Um, and of course, um, Valerie uh, went through a wonderful, the website was really inspiring, Valerie, um, uh, that OCAL has in terms of how you go about uh, implementing change based on those results. So this is our first attempt to um, really try to make this more accessible. This is an example of um, the page uh, for unions, the first page of the PDF. It's um, 
similar to the Healthy Work uh, Tools page on the union page, but you can see it's a four-step process here. You want to learn and help educate members. Um, we have resources available for that. We want uh, to share the Healthy Work Survey report results. Um, and we give examples of where that can happen. Um, and also ways to um, engage members um, participation. We really, as a, as a campaign, believe that uh, workers and um, union members uh, should be engaged in the process of setting priorities and developing feasible approaches to addressing these workplace stressor issues from the report. And then uh, strategize to learn um, from strategies um, that other unions and worker advocates have used to reduce sources of stress. So we click and, and, and provide this information to healthy work, um, the healthy work strategies pages. Uh, this is the second page of the PDF. These are the case examples that we've pulled out from the healthy work strategies page um, in various industries. So uh, in healthcare, manufacturing, education and transit, we have case studies um, showing how these different organizations have been able to improve staffing levels, for example, in this one uh, case for the New York State Nurses Association, the Quebec Hospital Worker Study, which many of you may be aware, uh, familiar with, uh, which was a fantastic labor management um, partnership with researchers that um, really did show before and after outcomes in an um, intervention study that showed uh, improvements in uh, mental health, particularly burnout uh, during this whole intervention process. Uh, we also show these case studies by uh, work stressors. So um, examples um, of different organizations approaches to improving work family balance, for example, up in Oregon, they've done a lot of work on family supportive supervisor training to help to address uh, work family conflict, um, particularly in uh, the construction industry, um, but also more generally. With uh, many examples of reducing bullying in the workplace, um, that have, have uh, been put together oftentimes by unions, but also in, uh, in other workplace um, areas. And then this PDF is um, based on the employer's tool page. So we wanted to make this page accessible as well. You can see it's a four step process, very similar to the one for unions. Um, share information um, with the organization. Also really finding out whether the organization is ready for healthy work. Um, we have a lot of information about costs to business um, in terms of mental health costs, uh, in terms of healthcare costs and so forth. Um, and then uh, step three, we have a, a lot of general ideas that um, we can use similar to the idea actions that um, uh, Valerie mentioned uh, is in, uh, produced by the stress assess report. So, um, you know, we have those um, available uh, on the tools page as well. And then we have step four, which is plan and design your own healthy work programs, which we rely really on the healthy work participatory program, which is um, a great model with templates on facilitating meetings, um, uh, you know, uh, having uh, feedback uh, from workers involved in those meetings to uh, design and implement um, workplace changes. Uh, these were some, this is page two of the PDF to employers. These are some of the general ideas about reducing job demands um, and enhancing job control. We also uh, included case examples of those, um, of successful ways in which workload was addressed and job control was enhanced, um, as well as uh, ways of producing a more supportive work environment, addressing work family balance, um, dealing with bullying um, and other uh, uh, issues of justice in the workplace. And then finally, um, you know, addressing the, the obviously more difficult areas like precarity, uh, long work hours and, and rewards. So uh, that's where we are right now. We're, um, we also obviously want to keep involving people in the movement. Um, there are many ways you can do that on our website by receiving our newsletter. Um, pledging support on our pledge page, um, sharing stories about the workplace, individuals can go on, um, and also becoming partners. Um, we have, you know, a lot of uh, traffic on Facebook and Twitter, and um, we hope you can all follow us and uh, check out the work that we're doing. Um, and we look forward to continuing our collaboration with OCAL and, uh, you know, doing more of this kind of thing. So thanks everyone.
Wonderful. Thank you so much, Marnie. Um, I have to say, I, I have joined the newsletter quite some time ago and <laughs> appreciate getting the newsletter. I come and check the website frequently, uh, taking a look at your blog and uh, um, taking a look at some of the, the papers that you've written. The, the information on there is fantastic. Um, a lot of it is uh, translatable to Canadian as well, um, mm -hmm. because you do, of course, it's, you know, American, yes. <laughs> but uh, it's, it's certainly, uh, it certainly is translatable. And um, especially uh, taking a look at the, um, the real life experience, like those, those things are what really um, help people to, to uh, recognize and uh, associate with what's going on maybe in their own workplace and how they can make change in their workplace. So um, we, uh, in our May Day, we had two sessions with, you know, success stories, etc. And I think it really makes a difference. So um, seeing that on your webpage, seeing those uh, examples is fantastic as well. Um, and then, of course, all the tools that you guys have. Um, so all these things are uh, things that we have been looking at on your webpage. And how do we make that, uh, you know, also look on our webpage? So thank you very much for that, that today. We do have a couple questions for you as well. Um, mm -hmm. So, uh, and, and we will open up the floor for those, if there's any other questions um, besides the ones written here, but we'll start with the first one here. Um, so is there a mechanism on your site for people to be able to compare their own results over time uh, to identify patterns or improvements, that kind of thing? Well, I think for individuals, I mean, they can, you can take this survey more than once uh, as an individual, obviously, um, and, you know, you could look at improvements uh, over time in the report. So you could look at, compare one report to the other report that you receive in an email. Um, as far as organizations are concerned, um, ideally, we would like uh, individuals to come back and redo the survey uh, after implementing change. I mean, that would create sort of a natural experiment kind of thing and, and give organizations uh, information on whether their improvements are effective and whether they're making important changes that might be reducing the risk in certain areas that were a problem. So we would work with organizations that um, would come, wanted to come back and, and do that. It would be more like a um, kind of a panel study rather than uh, trying to get the same people to respond each time. I think, uh, although, you know, we, we wouldn't be able to compare individual scores to their own scores, but we could, you know, create a new report, which would show the population compared to the population. So, you know, that's something that we could, you know, work on improving down the line, but, um, you know, that would be possible. It would just be more like a cohort um, approach. All right, great, thank you. Uh, the second question we have here is a question from Facebook from Eugene LaFrancois. Um, is there a timeline on getting on getting better from a traumatic incident when you have to go back before you're ready? Oh, wow. You know, I think return to work is a tough, you know, a mm -hmm. tough uh, area, obviously, especially in terms of um, uh, recovery from, you know, injuries, mental health injuries, um, and otherwise. So, um, I'm not totally familiar with, with the timeline, you know, that, that, you know, people would find in terms of return to work. There might be someone else in the audience that does occupational medicine and is, is better able to answer that. But of course, you know, the more, I think we know that the more resources available to people who are, um, uh, on disability or trying to recover from a traumatic workplace um, injury or traumatic experience, uh, the more resources available to them and the healthier the organization is when they return, the better the outcomes are for those people. So, you know, having, uh, you know, human resources and or um, uh, employee assistance programs available to people to attend to recovery uh, when they're back at work. Mm -hmm. um, where the trauma might have occurred, I think, is is an extremely important thing for organizations to, to do to encourage people to return to work and to recover. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Marnie. Um, okay. Another question here we have. Uh, wondering if you plan more content on bridging between the physical and mental health, example, comorbidity prevention, uh, as well as ergonomic impact. Yeah, I, I mean, I, we know we would like to have uh, a lot more contact on workplace mental health and the importance of dealing with work 
and work stressors uh, in terms of reducing workplace mental health issues or preventing them in the first place. Um, I really, the, the work you guys have done on creating that workplace mental health website that Valerie previewed um, is inspiring. And I really do think that um, uh, a lot of employers and, and labor unions and other groups really understand that mental health uh, is a major cost, not only to workers' health and well-being, but also to the bottom line um, and to our healthcare systems. And uh, understanding that work contributes to that, I think, is one of the major um, messages that we want to send. You know, because starting uh, with prevention, I think, is is one of the primary important goals. So we would like to add more contact on workplace mental health and. Uh, and the important um, work that people have done to try to um, change work organization to prevent mental health issues at the workplace. So, um, yes, <laughs> we would like, or at least we, we could link and collaborate more with the wonderful work that OCAL has done on their workplace mental health uh, website. Excellent, thank you. All right, any um, questions from the audience? Okay. So thank you very much, Marnie. Appreciate you coming today Pleasure. and uh, taking the time.